And here we are for yet another unboxing and today we have the Team Corelli Muraku which is a 1.8 scale four wheel drive brushless truggy that is 6S powered and this thing looks absolutely mean in green. It does come with a couple of extra features compared to the 2021 model and I cannot wait to show you what this thing has got to offer. But now, due to popular demand, the box slap is back. So out of the box, you're gonna find the car fully assembled and ready to go. You have your S2R radio, which is actually a pretty good radio that's been included with the Tim Corelli cars now for quite some time. Unfortunately, it's not the new, new one that uh, I unboxed with the Tim Corelli Skeeter earlier this year, but it's still fine and I think it'll do the job just as well. Uh, in this little bag here, you're gonna find an antenna tube that you can install inside the car. There's also a quick start guide for the car itself. And then there's also a little user manual for the radio so you can understand what all the dials and buttons do on this guy. Now, there was nothing else included in the box with this package. There's no tools or any additional spare parts or anything like that. However, currently, Team Corelli are having a bit of a sale with the uh, older models that they've got of uh, these particular cars and I think a few others as well where they are including the uh, tower to tower brace as well as the steering knuckles. Now you may need to install those yourself, they may not come pre-installed on the car, uh, but it's nice to know that, uh, you know, no additional price, you're gonna get the tower to tower brace and the steering knuckles included in the box. So uh, keep an eye out for those because I do believe that it's only on the, like the freshest batch of cars. If you go to a hobby shop and you still have, you know, they've got some of the older stocks, they may not have those components in the box. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind. So that, this is only temporary, of course. Uh, no doubt with future versions of these vehicles, those parts will probably come pre-installed um, and uh, you know, be standard uh, as, as going forward. But as of right now, the tower to tower brace and the steering knuckles come included in the box with the uh, newer uh, versions, you know, newest batch of these particular cars. Okay, so the radio is the S2R radio, as I said, runs on four double A's, has a nice foam wheel on here, um, which actually doesn't feel too bad, but it is very light and a little bit springy. Uh, the trigger is a little bit lightweight as well. I kind of would have preferred something a little bit heavier, but what I do like is the grip on this. It's got this rubberized yellow grip on here, which is actually really good. Um, you have a 50-50 and a 70-30 switch up the top here. You got steering jewel rates over here. Your standard steering trims and throttle trims are just there. And you got your reverse switches and bind button on the side just there. On the back here is your on and off switch. And then there's a little LED indicator light to let you know when the radio is on. These aren't too bad. Um, I don't mind these radios. I mean, um, I do tend to change them out because I, when I go out and bash, I usually have a bunch of cars with me. And rather than taking all different radios, I have all my cars hooked up to either my uh, DX5C or my Futaba 4PM. Um, but, you know, if nothing else, these radios actually do work quite well. I don't really have any major complaints about them. And finally, here we are for the Muraku itself. This guy is actually not a bad looking car. Now, this is of course the exact same car as the Shogun. So if you get the Muraku or the Shogun, likely you're gonna get the braces and the steering knuckles and all that. I think the uh, Kronos XDR also has these uh, components as well as the Dementor and all those other cars. Uh, will come with those, you know, in their latest batches. So uh, this one in particular, this I think came out after the Shogun. Um, and, you know, this is my first Tim Corelli Truggy. You know, I've had uh, a couple of uh, the Kronos cars. I've had the Punisher, which you can, or oh, you can't really see it, but it's on that top shelf just up there. Uh, I've got the Punisher as well. And, um, you know, I also have the Jambo, uh, which you can see just over there. Uh, but uh, this is my first like proper, you know, Tim Corelli Truggy. So um, I'm curious to see how this one's going to handle different compared to the Kronos cars compared to the uh, Jambo, for example. Um, I'm curious to see what the tune's gonna be like. And also, I own, want to compare this one to the newly released Vorza S and just see how different these two vehicles actually drive. Uh, so that's something that, you know, I'm really looking forward to uh, running those ones uh, back to back just to have a bit more of a comparison. No doubt this is advertised more as a basher truggy 
uh, not so much a race truggy, whilst with the Vorza S, you know, it's probably going to be um, a little bit lighter, it's going to be more agile, and it's definitely tuned more for racing. So um, I don't know if I'll be able to run both of these side by side, um, but back to back I can definitely do and, and give you guys a, a bit of feedback just to see well, you know, how different they actually drive. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the tires. You know, we'll start with the, the tires as per normal. Uh, these actually don't feel too bad. I am a little bit concerned about the actual tread pattern itself. I'm not sure how this is gonna fare, you know, in the terrain that I normally run on, on loose gravel and stuff. Uh, they do feel okay. You know, the walls have got some thickness to them um, and uh, the foams don't feel too bad. The rubber compound feels like a medium hard. It's not super soft, but we'll see. Um, I've seen a couple of people already kind of change out these tires, uh, you know, after their first run or two. So uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna go with them. Uh, chances are I'm probably gonna be uh, swapping these out as well. Body pins, of course, have the little rubber tethers, which are nice and easy to take out. And uh, the body itself, if I can get it out there, um, is, is not too bad. I mean, as you can see, just the plain white underneath. No protective tapes or anything like that. No reinforcements or plastic brackets or anything like that um, on this guy. But I do like, you know, the angles and the curves. It does give the roof especially quite some rigidity. Um, the body does feel quite thick at the front here as well. It actually has some serious thickness on the front. Uh, but it is thinning out at the back here. So I may actually do the same thing I did with the Vorza and strengthen the back end here a little bit with some uh, shoe goo and some drywall tape, just so that this doesn't rip apart on the back. Um, that's probably one of the things I'm going to do uh, before I actually run this car. But other than that, you know, it's a standard body, uh, nothing too fancy there. And you can see here now, the tower to tower brace already pre-installed. We have our, uh, 4074 2050 kV brushless motor, 150 amp ESC. We have XT90 connectors, and of course they've given us the loop there as well. So uh, if you're gonna run a single 4S or a single 6S, you can do that, and then of course you can unplug that to run two 4S, uh, two, sorry, two 2S or two 3S batteries. Um, and uh, they've also given me, you can see here, the brace, no, not the brace, the uh, shock tower is already pre-drilled and pre-fitted with all these bits here uh, for the tower to tower brace, which is really nice. Uh, five millimeter drive shafts all the way around, uh, steel drive cups. I think this has a 25 kilogram steering servo, aluminum servo horn. Uh, the receiver box, you can see, it doesn't have that antenna tube uh, in here. I mean, you can probably live without it. You may not necessarily need to put it on here, uh, but uh, you know, if you want to put it in there just for that, some extra protection, you definitely can do that. Uh, wing, I think, is the same as what's on the Kronos XTR and the Jambo and all that. I don't think the wings are any different. The bracing on these cars still amazes me to this day. Um, I've had no issues with the bracing on these at all, like none of the XTRs or anything like that, or the Punisher or the uh, Jambo, you know, I've not broken any of the bracing, which is uh, good to know. Although I did break a couple on the front here. I will say just where this uh, little nut is, which is probably gonna be a little bit hard to see, but just here, I have broken a couple of these braces. This is probably one of their weakest points. But in saying that, that was before this tower to tower brace went on here. So um, now that I've got the tower to tower braces on the Punisher and the Jambo, uh, we'll see how that uh, piece there is actually going to fare. Given that there's nothing really connected to it, as you can see now, um, it should be no issue at all. Uh, suspension on this guy actually feels really good. I mean, for bashing, this is probably ideal. Um, it's just, it's really nice. Um, I have to say the suspension on these cars is actually very, very good. Um, two Velcro straps here to hold your battery in place. You do have a little extra wall here that you can remove for some extra long batteries if you've got those. Uh, ESC is bolted down as well, which is nice. The one thing that is a little bit annoying, as you can see here, this switch tends to rotate on this round uh, tube. Um, you can, of course, you know, maybe put some um, uh, glue in these little caps here, maybe some epoxy or something like that, just to tr stop the rotation. A lot of the times after I'm done with my bash, uh, you know, especially with the XTRs, the switch is kind of like facing down from all the jumping, uh, which is a little bit annoying. So 
I don't know if this is something that Tim Corelli wants to or can address in the future to stop this from rotating. Um, maybe it's a quick and easy fix of something they can do. Maybe it's, there's really nothing that they plan on doing at all, but it's just an annoyance. It doesn't affect performance or durability or anything like that. It's just an annoying little thing that I think we just have to figure out ourselves how to stop that from rotating. No adjustable body posts because these, of course, uh, especially the ones on the rear are um, uh, integrated into the actual bracing. So you can't really, you know, run different bodies and try to do, you know, adjustable body posts unless, of course, you start hacking things up and modifying stuff. So that's probably the only way you can do that. Um, but overall, I do like the setup of these cars. You know, they don't have, um, you know, adjustable turnbuckles on the front uh, and they don't have adjustable steering, uh, steering links on, uh, sorry, adjustable turnbuckles in the rear and adjustable steering links in the front. They don't have those. Um, but to be honest, you know, the setup out of the box is actually pretty good. I don't have a lot that I can really complain about. I mean, you've got sway bars already pre-installed front and rear. Um, the chassis underneath, is actually been pretty good, you know. I'd, for these cars, honestly, I really don't have any major complaints regarding the chassis on these. Um, I think these have actually held up very, very well. The arms have been very good. Um, I've had very little issues with a lot of the Tim Corelli cars. With the exception of the Skeeter, the Skeeter is probably the only one that's given me a bit of a hard time, um, but we'll talk about that in a later video um, and a different video entirely. Now. I am pretty happy with this thing. I think, uh, you know, overall, this is actually going to do very well and I can't wait to, uh, you know, change out these connectors, put my XT150s, get a nice day because the weather here has been absolutely horrific and I don't know when I'll actually get a chance to run this thing, uh, but I'm hoping to have a nice day very, very soon so I can take this out and take, uh, you know, a bunch of other cars out and give you guys some running videos. Okay, so for my wish list, I've got to be honest, I'm really struggling to come up with a few things here to put on the wish list, uh, but I didn't want to just dump the category. I had to come up with a few things. Some of them you guys may appreciate, some of them are kind of trivial, and some of them I think are really far-fetched and maybe Tim Corelli will never really touch them. So uh, let's get into it. Foam block support for the body. So the body, you know, the, the, the car has this center tower that you would have seen earlier, and the body is kind of just above it, so you can see that's where it is there. It's probably less than 10 millimeters above that uh, support, which isn't bad. It's actually pretty good. But I think, uh, you know, they did it on the Tim Corelli Skeeter. I don't see why they can't do it on this one either. Just put a nice little foam block in there just to help support the body. Um, I think that would be kind of cool because let's face it, a lot of us are gonna end up landing upside down at some point and uh, having a little bit of support there would be good. I wouldn't mind also seeing maybe you know, some small roof skids or something to protect the body from getting uh, eaten up by tarmac and all sorts of things. So uh, we'll see if that ever happens. Uh, a bigger bumper. I think a bigger bumper is actually a good thing to have on these particular cars. You can see the bumper sits behind the body. I would like to see something kind of come up a little bit in front of the body. Uh, or at least flush with the with the wheels and tires because um, as you guys probably would have seen my latest video of the Vorza S I accidentally long darted that thing into the ground and I've got to be honest I thought I killed the car but I think what actually saved it was a really nice strong bumper that it's got on the front and the car basically came out of that uh, long dart pretty much undamaged although a few moments later the servo did die uh, but that's not really surprising, you know, those servos are not exactly the best, so uh, that didn't completely take me by surprise. But, uh, you know, structurally, the car survived a really nasty crash. And, uh, you know, I can see these sort of vehicles that come with like these little tiny race bumpers uh, can be a bit problematic if you, if you have the same sort of incident as I did. I think for a basher vehicle, you'd want a basher bumper on the front there. Uh, now, the next thing is Velcro straps. These cars come with two Velcro straps. I've got to be honest, I actually prefer to have three. There is a slot in here for an additional Velcro strap that you can get and install yourself. So you can see the slot just there. And uh, if you remember back last year when I ran the Jambo for the first time, I actually broke one of the Velcro straps and the battery went flying. And since then, pretty much all my Team Corelli cars are running three battery, battery straps. Now, um, I've had no issues since then, and admittedly, it may have been a bit of a fluke incident to have that one strap break. It's not something that happens all the time, but 
you know, the slots are there. Surely you can in include the third strap and just make, you know, putting those batteries in place just that a little bit safer. A watertight receiver box is the next thing on my list. I'll take the body off again. Uh, but a watertight receiver box, I think, should be something that uh, these, these cars definitely deserve. Um, I'm not one to really go splashing my cars through water or, uh, you know, and I certainly don't have snow here in Melbourne. But I know a lot of people around the world don't have, you know, ultra dry conditions all year round and uh, some of you actually go looking for puddles and want to run your cars through water some of you got snow um, and uh, you know I think a watertight receiver box is definitely something that uh, Tim Corelli could look at in the future as well the on and off switch rotating as I mentioned earlier this is a bit of an annoyance I don't think they're going to look at fixing that I think that's something that we probably have to sort out ourselves um, but it would be nice to see that somehow get fixed in the future whether it will be in the next version or five versions down the line, we'll see what happens. Uh, and last but not least, adjustable body posts. Of course, uh, you know, that's gonna be a little bit tricky on the rear here because these are actually integrated into these braces, uh, but the fronts could definitely be fairly easy to do. Um, and, um, you know, how they're gonna tackle the rear ones, I'm not entirely sure. But one thing's for sure, uh, you know, once we're done trashing our stock bodies, not everybody's gonna go out there and get the exact same body again. Um, even though they may get clear bodies, uh, some of us like to put aftermarket bodies on these, you know, Proline, J Concepts, whatever. And uh, it would be nice to have some adjustable body posts so that you can actually position the body properly. Um, that's something that they can probably look into in the future, I think. I think these cars deserve it. Not just the, uh, the Truggy, but also the Monster Trucks as well. Uh, but we'll see what happens. And that wraps up this unboxing of the Morocco from Team Co Rally. Now, I do want to give them a big shout out as well and thank you for uh, sending this car out for review. Uh, I do appreciate them supporting the channel and allowing me to be transparent with all my viewers and also giving them some uh, constructive criticism in order to make these cars a little bit better for you in the future. So a uh, big thank you to Tim Corelli for making this happen. Now, of course, for all of you who are still here watching this, uh, thank you all for sticking around and uh, you know watching this all the way till the end. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button before you go. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you wanna watch more content like this as well as some running videos. And of course, check out the video description down below. I'll have links in there to the Tim Corelli website where you can check out the Morocco as well as all their other vehicles and get a little bit more informed on some of the uh, specs of these cars. And of course, I'll have links in there to my social media pages as well, uh, where you can stay a little bit ahead of what goes on here on YouTube. That is it for me. Thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you all next time. What this car has got to offer, because it does come with a couple of additional features, which I think are gonna keep a couple of people happy out there. And I'm running out of breath. <laughs> No tools, no batteries, no chargers. So you will need to get all of those things for you uh, in order to make the car go broom. Here, which is the two, uh, no it's not, two R radio, which we'll talk about in a little while. You get, of course, oh, God damn it. It's not the new, new one that I unboxed with the Tinko Rally Skeeter earlier this year. And then of course you get a bag with a couple of, uh, couple of what? Um, and uh, the Skeeter had this really nice foam block uh, to protect. Um, let me start that again because I'm making a lot of noise.